Well, it is good to be back. Uh, Dee reminded me just a few minutes ago I haven't been here since October. That has been a while, so it's good to see your smiling faces. I will remind you that our Lenten season this last year started the first Sunday in March, March 6th. And we often think about what can I give up in Lent, right? You know, in traditional religion, you give up all the good stuff, like the chocolate and the wine and the M&Ms, which is why we in Unity don't aspire to be in mainstream religion. <laughs> so we in New Thought give up what we call negative thinking, our feelings, our belief around negativity. And as I was going through that Lenten season this last year, I was thinking about what negative thoughts do I have? And it was interesting when I really got into that powerful place of recognizing what it is that I was feeling a little rub about. I noticed that what it was, was preaching. So guess what I gave up for Lent and haven't taken back up since today. I have not preached since February. Now I've talked on a lot of stages, but I've not done the whole spiritual thing. So to hear a song, about you remind me to be welcomed back to this place is very special. And, you know, as I picked up again my tablet to write a sermon, I thought, oh, they've heard them all, so I'll just choose number five <laughs> and bring it to you. But I was thinking about what perfect timing it is for my first sermon since February to be today. Anyone here recognize or feel met, uh, Mercury being in retrograde for the last, yeah, <laughs> she did. So, you know, it's been in retrograde all through the month of July and just before. Venus, Uranus was in retrograde. The moon was in the shadow. There were several eclipses. And today marks a new day, as each day does. But today is a new day on the lunar cycle. We got out of the Mercury retrograde July 31st, just this last Wednesday. Yes. And we start a new year right here, right now, today. And in this time, astronomers tell us that there is an 11-day window in which we get to let go of the old and come into alignment with what is new. And they call that the time of planting intentions. This is an 11-day window of planting intentions for a new lunar cycle. Now, all the visitors today have thought, what woo-woo church have I just walked into? So I promise I'm not going to give you a whole lot of stuff about astronomy and astrology. But you know, I want you to think back to January 1st of every year that you've been on this planet. There's a celebration going on. You know, New Year's Eve, you're letting go of all that stuff and you're celebrating and on January 1, you eat the black eyed pea and then you say, this is what I want my new year to look like. And we create ritual around it. In unity, we do burning bowl ceremonies. Others might do a vision board for the new year. We go on retreat and we let go spiritually of that which is served and we claim that which is going to serve in the future. Well, since the last time you saw me, I've been doing a lot of that letting go. I think I told you last time I was here that I had gone through a lot of change in my life. I'd had a major flood at my house. I've been remodeling that. Um, and my letting go took on this form that I was not expecting. You know, I don't watch television, but there was this show that everyone in my office was talking about and I had to find it. So it was on Netflix. It's called Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. Anyone here seen it, heard of it? Yeah, lots of you. So Marie Kondo does this experiment with people and she's best-selling author of four major books and she's an organizational consultant. And she has created this method in which you can let go of things by asking one simple question. Hold that thing in your hand and ask, does this spark joy? Does this spark joy? You have an immediate reaction within your body. The answer is yes or no. And so I began to do that method. I took all the clothes as she directs out of my closet, which took about a day and a half, took all the clothes out of my closet, put it on the bed. The bed fell. I had to buy a new bed. No. 
and you pick up each one, does this spark joy? I was amazed at how often the no came into existence. The pile just grew, no, 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 maybe, no, no, yeah, that one does. My closet is now bigger than I ever remembered it being. And I went quickly to the kitchen and started doing that to all the drawers in the cabinets. I went to the garage and cleaned out the garage. I went to the spare bedroom. And all of a sudden, my house is just this big, expansive space. Well, I own six houses. So I went to the next house and did the same thing. And I went to the next house and did the same thing. And what I realized in this method is it's not really all about the stuff, it's about the vibration within me when I hold it, when I recognize it, where I remember it. And what I thought I was going to do was clean out a bunch of houses. What I'm ending up doing is getting rid of the house itself. So out of my six houses, five of them are going to be on the market in the next six months. And I'm moving from a place of being a landlord for the last 28 years to a place of flipping houses instead. So HGTV just keeps showing up for me for some reason. <laughs> so, you know, as we think about that principle that she has discovered, it's a principle of choosing joy, of choosing joy, completing your release and choosing something that serves you, of planting the intentionality and the conscious awareness of what sparks joy and then letting all the other stuff go. And with that, we give our full attention to what feeds our soul. We give our full attention to the value and the benefit of our spirit. And as I was doing that, I was listening one day to Abraham Hicks, which I listen to often. And Esther spoke a little affirmation to me, and I'm going to find it here. She says, you are here for the purpose of joy. You are here for the purpose of joy. She went on to say, there is an ease that you can step into when you focus on allowing what you desire rather than efforting your way into it or against it. You know, I've had the freedom since I've been doing this process because that's what it creates is space and freedom. And I've had the freedom to hang out with some friends because when you let go of all the responsibility and all the stuff, there is this space that you get to fill up. So I have intentionally and consciously filled it up with friends and things that would feed my soul. And one of those friends is someone you are familiar with. Her name is Mindy Odlin. She wrote an amazing book called um, What If Up? What If It All Goes Right? And I've been hanging out with Mindy recently. We are co-teaching a mastermind class at the moment. And in that class, every week for 12 weeks, we look at a different thing to do so that we can find intentionality and clarity. And the thing that really struck me this time around was the principle of non-attachment. Now, she writes about that beautifully in her book, and I'm going to mention her definition in just a moment. When you get into a place of letting things go, of becoming unattached or non-attached to person, place, thing, idea, belief. You create all of that space and you then are invited or inviting the good, the God, the power, the presence into that space. Well, I think one of the most useful spiritual practice we can ever embrace is the act of letting go. But letting go goes way beyond what we have always thought it was in the Lenten process or just in cleaning out a closet. Because letting go really asks us a question. We think we're asking, does this spark joy? But the letting go process is also asking our spirit a question. And it's asking us to live in a spiritual existence rather than that material world. It's asking us in spite of all current circumstances going on in our personal world, whether that's a circumstance around health, finances, relationship, whatever that might be, I believe that how well you let go is your clearest, most obvious indication of where you are on that spiritual path. Because if you're struggling and efforting to let it go, there's not what. There's not trust in what will be. 
So this whole thing about surrender and letting go isn't as heavy as we'd like to think it is. It's really about trust. And it was interesting, first service, I have this little pad of notes that I refer to once in a while. During first service, it died. A painful, slow, horrible, noisy death. And it's no coincidence that my sermon is, is on surrender and trust. I got to finish all the first service without notes. So, you know, when we walk this path, some would call it the road less traveled, it involves courage. It involves courage to overcome one major obstacle in our life experience, and that obstacle is resistance. It provides the courage to overcome our resistance. The path to less resistance is not about releasing a thing. It's not about releasing a desire. It's not about releasing a struggle or a fear. The path to less resistance is about releasing resistance. Can someone write that down on Facebook today? The path to less resistance is only about releasing resistance. And as we get to practice that, you know, you could practice that all day today. You could practice it with Congress. You could pa practice it with the administration in the White House. You could practice it around your health or your finances. You get to practice it in whatever arena you'd like. And when you do that, you have the choice to invite the alignment of who and what you are, the freedom, the spark of joy. Our second unity principle tells us that we are that spark of joy. We are the spark of that goodness that you call God. And I believe a major reason most of us resist letting go of stuff whether it's stuff in the closet in the garage or stuff that's in our relationships and our finances, the belief system that we hold, the major reason we resist letting go is that we trust our limited perceptions, our conditioned mind, much more than we will ever trust the imminent and transcendent mystery of that which we call God. Have you noticed that? I mean, it's hard for me to even say that. But we talk about letting go and letting spirit. We've just sang four or five songs about letting go, releasing and letting go. And most of the time our actions prove that we really believe we know a better solution. God or spirit will be plan B. We are in control and we can do this. But really to the extent that we can let go during whatever challenge is presented to us, be it with that health or relationship, whatever the case may be, to that same extent do we really trust the universe to hold it, to give it unto. Anything else really is just a lie that we tell ourselves. We're masking our faith. Does that make sense? And so there is work to be done in the letting go process. Trust me, I've bagged up enough clothes and taken them to charity and I've filled dumpsters over the last few months. So yes, there's work in the letting go, but the work may mean getting insight into one of the greatest reasons that letting go is so difficult. It means giving up control. Oh, you felt that vibration all of a sudden, didn't you? Giving up control. Now, why would we ever want to do that? Because it's the only thing that we really have any control over, except we don't. It's just the greatest illusion of our lifetime. For most of us, giving up or, heaven forbid, losing control is really the ultimate disadvantage in our perceived, limited, uh, conditioned mind, the ultimate loss of power. It's one thing to give up control of other people's lives, right? But it's really difficult to think about giving up control in your own. And yet, when we don't, what you're really saying is that I don't trust this benevolent being that I call God or the universe or whatever name you give that divine love with something as important as my life. Most of us, most of our actions continue to prove that we believe we are wiser and more competent than spirit in that moment because we're going to hold on to it, we're going to control it. And I've talked a lot about letting go. One of our spiritual powers is the power of elimination. It's no wonder 
we don't want to let go when our idea of God is that God is small or weak. We're not able to take this thing. So instead of embracing a bigger, more miraculous power or concept of God, we face life in control. And when we face life in control, we face it alone. Not long ago, I was part of this party that I went to, and we all had to dress up. And um, there were groups that did this, and for whatever reason, they were giving out prizes. And my group was the circus group. I don't even remember all of the details. All I remember is I had to order tattoos off of Amazon, and I covered my entire body in temporary tattoos and went as the tattoo man. Add that to your list, Mitch. So, <laughs> by the way, they don't wash off overnight like the instructions say. So, <laughs> one of the characters in the circus piece of this was the juggler. And we had this really great guy, and he came in juggling all of his pins throughout the entire event. It was really fun to watch him. He went from three pins up in the air to five to seven. I was just in awe of watching that. And I also walked away with great spiritual insight because what happened in that moment was people would try to talk to him as he was juggling his pins up in the air, and he couldn't be in relationship with them because all of his focus, all of his attention was right here. And if he missed that, if he let go of the control of that, those pins would fall. It was also interesting to notice that you couldn't be in relationship with him in any fashion. You couldn't hold hands with him because his hands were busy. You couldn't have conversation with him. You couldn't be in relationship with him. It's the same with us. Whatever we're looking at and controlling in our life, whatever pins we are tossing about and juggling, we are diminishing our relationship with another or with our higher power. And much of our difficulty in letting go is all about fear and control. What would it be like on this planet? I'm going to ask this really big question of you. What would it be like on this planet if every one of us right now just let go of our fear-based thinking and control? Who would you be without it, even for five minutes? Who would you be if you let all of that stuff fall Vulnerable, for one, yes. But would you also be more trusting that it did fall and that it was caught? I was in a yoga class not long ago. I had a great instructor. She put us in this crazy pose, and I was all of a sudden on one leg, flying like a plane in the air. And she kept saying, just trust, just trust. And so she kept us in that position for, it felt like three days. And... <laughs> As she put us there, and it got quiet, she just kept saying, just trust, just trust. I finally lost it, and I said, what am I supposed to be trusting here? And her answer was brilliant. Trust that the floor will catch you when you fall. <laughs> it's not that far away. It was a brilliant answer, and it reminded me of my concept or my understanding of grace. When I let go of all that stuff, grace is what catches me when I fall. And I think in this new season, in this new lunar cycle, in this new season of your life, we can give up things, much like we do in the Lenten season, on a different and deeper level. We can give up those deep, contrasting feelings of fear, of unworthiness, of control, of victimhood, and in its place, we can plant a seed instead, a seed of intentionality, a seed that will grow into this thing called joy and peace and harmony, worthiness, grace. Again, what would it be, who would you be if you let go of the fear-based thinking, if you let go of control? The way you answer that one question will illumine the greatest fear and beliefs you have going on about it. But don't be fearful of that too. Just notice it, recognize it, and let it go. And what happens in that process is we get to reassess whether or not we believe in that benevolent power that we speak about. We get to think that 
will people take advantage of me? And all of a sudden I'm in that belief system that people are inherently bad? Or will I give unto it and trust that people are inherently good? And that people will rise to their greatest potential? I told you I was going to share Mindy's definition of non-attachment. This is what she says in her book. Non-attachment is the ability to let go of the need to change, fix, or control outer circumstances. It's not giving up control. It's giving up the need to control. It's not giving up your power to fix things. It's giving up your need to fix it, your need to change it. It really is the missing secret that allows our dreams to unfold into reality. Our Unity co-founder, Charles Fillmore, once wrote in the re revealing word that letting go equates to erasing from consciousness all thoughts that are untrue. That sounds easy. Just get a big eraser and erase your thoughts. Erasing from consciousness all thoughts contrary to the truth. Well, if you don't think you have the willpower to do that, you have the opportunity to trust that you have the spiritual power to do it. Elimination is one of our 12 spiritual powers. When you get to that one, I think you're going to be studying it this month, it sounds like. The color, I'm going to test my knowledge here, the color is russet, so you'll be painting your wood brown and red. And one of the things that comes up with that understanding of elimination is that we have the ability to release, to remove, to deny, to let go, to denounce, whatever word you want to give it, all of the stuff that is no longer serving us. If you'll look on the front of your program, you'll see today's daily word was something I got to choose. I release that which no longer serves me and I open to the abundant good. I open up. That is really the trust piece. My grandfather was one of the most amazing men I ever had the privilege of knowing. He was a farmer who didn't just plant a little plot in the backyard of the garden. He planted an acre and a half of every vegetable and fruit known to man. He fed his family and every family in the county. And I would watch him. I learned so much from observing him plant and nurture and reap the harvest. And just like a farmer when they plant a kernel of corn, he believes in that kernel. He trusts it. He believes and trusts that that seed is going to grow into a stalk and ultimately into an ear of corn. He has no doubt about it because he has the knowledge of the way it works. He has the evidence. He's been doing this year after year after year. Out of a hundred kernels of corn, he's going to get a whole harvest of them. Does it mean a hundred are going to grow? No. But when you give your attention to the two or three that don't, you're not giving your attention, your focus to the 98 that do. And so he trusts the evolution of which he has planted. He trusts the forces beyond his control. Did you hear that? He trusts in himself, in the universe, whatever the, may, the fact may be. Scripture tells us we are to fix our eyes on things that are unseen rather than are seen. When you plant that seed in the ground, it, you can't see it anymore, but you get to trust it, right? So what I've discovered through this process for me, letting go is not as difficult as I had made up the story. It is not as difficult as the story I'd al always told. Letting go ended up being an invitation an invitation to say yes to change. I've told you before, I've said it on many stages, there's no pain in change. There's only pain in our resistance to change. That's a really big coffee pot moment. If you want to write that down, put it on your coffee pot so every morning you start your day with that. There's going to be no, change, there's no, going to be no pain in any change today only in my resistance to it. When the wind blows and the tree bends, no resistance. But if it doesn't, it will break. The same for us. You know, I've thought a lot about all of the letting go sermons that I have ever preached. And I've thought about 
the time when I would put a paper butterfly on every seat in the house and talk about how the caterpillar would transform and change into the butterfly. The thing is, it's just not that simple. We think and we talk about caterpillars becoming butterflies as if they just go into this cocoon and they slip on this beautiful pair of iridescent colorful wings and then they step back out. But the greater truth is cal caterpillars have to dissolve into this disgusting pile of goo and then they are transformed. And the same for us. If you are a mess right now, wrapped up in your drama and trauma and dharma, just stay there for a moment and trust that the wings are going to be there. Trust is a huge thing because to know the truth means to let go of all the untruths. I think Lao Tzu said it best when he said, when I let go of what I am, I become who I might be. I give myself permission. I allow it. So, whatever the case may be in your personal life today, don't underestimate the value of what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you're believing, and your power to let it go. Our scripture today, if you'll turn to that slide for me, is from Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 18th verse, and it says, Truly I tell you this, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Heaven is not this place up there, out there, beyond the puffy white clouds. Heaven is the state of consciousness within. Whatever we bind within us is bound in our spiritual consciousness. Whatever we loose within us, whatever we let go of, whatever we trust is loosed in that consciousness. That creates freedom. That creates all the space. And you are so free right now and in every given moment that you could choose bondage if you wanted to. That's freedom. But the truth, the greater truth of who and what you are is that you can allow yourself the gift of trusting. The gift of trusting that whatever you're going to put down, whatever you're going to practice in this time of non-attachment is your accepting of what comes and what you're allowing to leave when it's time. What's for me will come to me and be for me effortlessly. Non-attachment sets our imagination free to soar. It removes all the resistance to hearing that still small voice of our inner wisdom. Our focus does not have to be on all of the things that we're juggling. Our focus could be on letting all of that go and being in relationship with others on the planet, being in relationship with our true higher self that we call God. Attachment is our focus, and sometimes we try to make things happen from there. I think it's a Zen proverb that says it best, let go or be dragged. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Let go or be dragged. So whether it's an unwanted circumstance that happens to us or something that we initiate voluntarily, change is our intention, our invitation to actualize the wisdom, the compassion, the grace that makes us both fully human and expressions of the divine. You've heard the phrase, life is a journey, and that's true. It's a journey, however, into the unknown where change is the only constant that is going to be happening there. There's no pain in that change, only in your resistance to it. So our challenge is to pay attention, to heal whatever needs to be healed, to let go of whatever we need to release, to grieve whatever loss is there, to stay faithful to the certainty that we live in a spiritually meaningful reality. We are called by that change. It's calling you by name. And in answering that call, you get to choose to open yourself up, to open yourself up to that freedom, to open yourself up to that joy that is sparking that soul nourishment within you, to open yourself up to what you have known all along, which is you get to live a life of authentic trust and surrender. That truth with a capital T is the consciousness of grace. So whenever 
you surrender those untruths, when you surrender every aspect of lack, when you give up every limiting thought and belief, when you let go of all of the past mistakes of your life existence, when you let go of every judgment and every assumption that serves you not, when you release and surrender and let go of every aspect of your ego personality of control, you surrender unto the universal law that says, now you become. Now you become who and what you were called to be, who and what you might be, 